Hi, welcome to, uni welcome to Unit 3, Classical Physics. Chapter 9, Thermal Physics, is the first chapter in the unit. And more than anything, it illustrates how the mechanical concepts developed in the first two units are broadly applicable, particularly in the treatment of work and energy. The chapter starts out with some background thermal physics material. Some people might have seen this in a previous science class, like temperature scales, thermal expansion, or even ideal gas law, if you have taken chemistry. If you have taken chemistry before, you might also have seen how we define heat in physics and chemistry. Heat always refers to the transfer of thermal energy. Other concepts you might also have seen in previous science classes and chemistry classes are mechanisms of heat transfer, conduction, convection, radiation, and some basic calorimetry calculations using the ideas of heat capacity or specific heat capacity, which is heat capacity per kilogram of material in latent heat. If you have not seen these materials before, I encourage you to slow down and take your time with these first six sections of chapter. These sections are included. All the materials are presented in this one place so that everyone, regardless of their starting background science knowledge, will now have the background knowledge necessary as we go into the discussion of thermodynamics. What we cover starting with section 9.7, thermodynamics is really why chapter 9 is included with unit 3. You will see here how the concept you learned in unit 2, work and energy, applies to this new situation and how this application is at work in modern devices. The first law of thermodynamics is a restatement of conservation of energy with the thermal energy heat transfer explicitly included. The change in internal energy, whatever that means, is equal to the change due to two different ways of transferring energy, mechanical work and heat transfer. Any increase or decrease in internal energy of a system, which is what we sometimes sloppily call thermal energy, is accounted for in the energy flow into the system Q net and in the energy flow out of the system, network done by the system. Starting from here, we build up to the capstone of this chapter, heat engines. First, we need to generalize work in the context of fluids, working fluids of a heat engine. You see in this figure how the original definition of work work is force times displacement, is related to the expression for work in thermodynamics, pressure times change of volume. The most striking example of this description of work and the first law of thermodynamics you will see in this book is adiabatic expansion. Expanding gas cools down. You can see it in this graph here. Not because the gas molecules are not colliding as frequently or because its pressure goes down. You see that both of those things happen with this isothermal expansion. And the temperature remains the same for this isotherm. But because the gas does work as it expands, work done is pressure times the volume change. And in the case of adiabatic expansion, there is no heat flow to provide the energy necessary to do work. So the internal energy decreases, which is reflected in the decreasing temperature. The thermodynamic processes listed in this section are important in building up a heat engine cycle. You see an example of a special heat engine cycle, Carnot cycle, in section 9.10 that is built up of isothermal expansion and contraction connected together by adiabatic expansion and contraction. 
One important feature of a heat engine cycle, as pointed out in section 9.9, .9, is that the net change of internal energy is zero over a cycle because the engine returns to its original state after one cycle. This important fact gives you key thermodynamic relationships you will see in this chapter. For example, the work done by a heat engine in one cycle is equal to the net heat flow, QH minus QC. Since over one cycle, the change in the internal energy is zero. And the first law of thermodynamics says that net Q minus W is equal to the internal energy change. Entropy, and the second law of thermodynamics, is a particularly interesting subject. But I think that's where we start to run out of time in this long chapter. I'm not assigning very many problems out of these last few sections, which look at the second law of thermodynamics in many different ways. The second law is one law of physics that gives time its forward direction. I just want to encourage you to read through it and bring me any questions. Look at the Carnot efficiency and know that even the perfect ideal engine cannot be 100% efficient. This is the formula that gives the efficiency of an ideal perfect Carnot engine. All right, uh, that's all we have time for. Please let me know if there are any questions and see you in the next chapter. Bye.